Good morning, Bridge Church family. Come on in. I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet as we get started this morning. I wanted to open up a little bit with just an encouragement, and then Russ is going to pray to kick us off. And what I want to call you to and remind you of is a call to worship. We are gathered here to worship the one true God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And as we come together right now, this is a good moment to begin to shake off the last week. I don't know if you had a great week or a rough week or just had a week. We all have weeks sometimes. And this is a time where we can shake that off and begin to just rest into him and rest in our worship, rest in our praise. So I want to invite you to bow your heads for a moment. And I want you to picture yourself shaking off the residue of the week. Shaking off the moment, shaking off the person who pulled out in front of you, or maybe you pulled out in front of somebody, <laughs> but shake it off. And let's begin to focus on the Lord. Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah came before the throne and he saw him high and lifted up. And the only thing Isaiah could get out of his mouth was, woe is me. I am undone. And it was the presence of God that permeated the atmosphere and the very molecules that he was breathing into his lungs. And all he could say is, woe is me, I am undone. And that's our heart today, to find that place of being undone. Pastor Russ is going to lead us in worship, but also lead us in prayer as we get ready. Hear our sacrifice this morning, Father our sacrifice of praise as we come before you we are undone oh but for the grace of Jesus Christ whose mighty name we lift up in praise this morning Oh 
Thank you for your joy that is everlasting, God. Thank you that only weeping can only endure for the night. Your joy everlasting, which is our strength, God, comes to refresh and renew. Oh, thank you, God, for your spirit. We want more of your spirit today. Pour out everything you have on us, Father God. We want revival in this place, God. Revive your people. Let's let this be our prayer this morning. God, we declare we want more of your spirit. Come and awaken your people, God. We declare this morning. Let's sing. Come awaken your people. Come awaken this city. Oh, God of revival, pour it out. Pour 
spirit today. We need more of you, God. May we decrease so that you may increase in our lives, God. More of your spirit to overcome, to prevail. Spirit gives us a victory.
hearts cry today and our declaration that when you're in the room, when you feel a place, when you feel a space something has to break, something has to move, something has to shift something has to change and Lord your word tells us that with you nothing is impossible so, Father, whatever is happening in various situations with individuals right here, right now, or with families or couples right now, Lord, our declaration, our trust, our belief, our faith is in this truth that when you're in the room, something has to break. And we welcome you, Lord, to be our breaker. Be the one who gives us and empowers and enables us to break through. And so we follow you, Lord, through the fire, through the storm, through the waters. We follow you. Be our breaker. Go ahead of us. Something has to break. So, Lord, in this atmosphere with your presence and you in this room, we trust you. We honor you. We love you. We worship you. We ignore you. No, we, we, we don't ignore you. 
We adore you. I'm from West Texas. You got to forgive me. <laughs> Lord, we adore you. Thank you, God, for loving us. And we give you this time and we give you this moment. We give you what you're doing in us. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen and amen. As you're seated, ignore one another, please. <laughs> I feel the Lord laughing at me right now. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Welcome to the bridge, family. So you may notice that uh, we're pretty real here if you're new. And so we want to say thanks for being here with us today. And for our online folks, thank you for being with us as well. And you're going to notice on the screen um, an email address, info at bridgefpg.com. And that's for prayer requests. So if you're watching online, thanks for being with us. Do prepare and get your elements together for communion in just a bit. But also, if you have any prayer needs, we want to pray with you and stand with you. So you can write in. And also for our home folk right here, same thing, info at bridgefpg.com. And you can send those prayer needs in. And many of you are. So we're fielding those, and we get those out to our team immediately. We have a quick turnaround on that. But also, if you're here and you want to stop by the Connection Center on the way out, you can fill out a prayer card there as well. Also, if you're a first-time guest, we want to welcome you to the bridge and uh, let you know that we have a sign on this wall, which I've just reminded myself of. Can somebody read the invisible sign on the wall? No perfect pastors allowed. That's good. Russ just changed our sign. No perfect people, no perfect pastors. We, we can in interject that one. And what does this one over here say? Anybody remember? There is no perfect church. And so we're just here, we're just real, and uh, it's not a show. That's why we laugh and enjoy being together, enjoy the presence of God, and enjoy our faux pas as well. So what a blessing to be with you today. And if you are a first-time guest, thanks for being here. We're thrilled that you chose to spend your morning with us in worship. And so could we welcome our first-time guests with a hand clap? <laughs> Amen. And we have a little gift for you if you want to stop by the Connect Center on the way out. Fill out a Connect card. We've got a gift bag full of all kinds of stuff. And it's just our way of saying thanks for spending your morning with us. And so we're thrilled that we're here. I want to remind you that uh, we are a people of prayer. And Jesus, in quoting the prophet who was quoting God, said, My house shall be called a house of prayer. And so if you have your VIP card, you can pull that out. If you don't know what that is, they're on just about every flat surface around here. You can get one. And it's a bookmark that we made, a little tool where you can write in seven names on each side of the card. And one side of the card, we're praying for those who need to come to know Christ. In, in a saving way and need to be born again. On the other side of the card, we're praying for people who have just found themselves disconnected and detached, and we're just praying for reconnection for them. And so we're going to lift that up, and we're also going to pray for Fredericksburg Bible Church, Pastor Alex Garcia and his wife Stephanie, and they're our Church of the Week, and not only are we praying, but other churches throughout our community are also praying for them as well, and we want to pray for one another and be the biggest fan and the greatest greatest cheerleader of all the churches in our community as we continue to lift up Jesus across the hill country. So we want to pray for that. So would you bow your heads and pray with me? Lord Jesus, what a privilege to be with you and before you. And we pray for these very important people. These are people that you've put on our heart, and they're people that we are connected to where we live, where we work, and where we play. And so we bring them before your throne of grace where your word says we can come with confidence and boldness. And we can find mercy and grace to help, grace to help in our time of need. So we hold them before you and bring them before your throne. And Father, we also pray for Pastor Alex Garcia and his wife as they continue to lead this church. Encourage them, bless them. And Father, I pray that they would find themselves finding life in Fredericksburg in the community of faith in the kingdom of God. So encourage them as they continue to lead. And for all of our churches that are gathering right now, worship services going on all across our area and our region, Father, we speak life over them. We speak joy over them and blessing over them. Them, and that, Father, you would lift and lighten the load of those in leadership and those who are carrying the weight to encourage them today that they are loved and they are appreciated for what they are doing. And, Lord, they, they are loved by you, so we bless them. And, Father, we also pray for our nation. Uh, we always know that you're interacting and working and moving, and, 
Lord, even today, we ask for intervention upon our nation. We thank you for leaders who have stepped up and stepped out of typical business life arenas to serve our nation in various leadership positions, just like Pastor Rick McClure with us today as state representative in Arkansas. And we bless him that as he continues to pastor and lead his church in Malvern, Arkansas, he continues to also make the drive to Little Rock and to serve. And so we're thankful for godly leaders that you call into leadership in our nation. And we say, Lord, more, more, more. We need more. And we also pray, Lord, for the shalom, the peace of Jerusalem, as your word commands us to do. Lord, protect and bless that great city and the great nation of Israel. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. If you'll turn your attention to the screen. So we have a lot going on. If you'll go to the, the landing page of our website, bridgefbg.com, and you'll scroll down, you'll see our events section. And all the things that you see going on up here are on there. And many of those you can just register online to attend and be involved. One of the things I do want to highlight is our uh, celebration, worship service, and baptism. And that is on Wednesday, June 8th. We call it a night of worship. And, and if you've ever been to one of these, we just we crank everything up a little louder, and we just really go after God and enjoy enjoy him enjoying us and we love his presence it's a high value here at our church and so we want to welcome you to come out that night invite friends invite family maybe you have neighbors you know our goal is never to try to get people from other churches we don't need that we're trying to reach people not steal people amen and so but this is a great night for fellowship if they want to connect and maybe come and see a style of worship that they're not used to maybe from a traditional setting and just enjoy the freedom in the atmosphere now Another part of that is baptisms. And so we've had several people over the last few months that have given their hearts to Christ. They've mentioned to me, hey, I want to be baptized. I'm like, okay, then we'll do this. So we need you to register and sign up so we'll know how many to prepare for. But if you've given your heart to Christ, you've stepped over the line, but you've never followed the Lord of Believers' baptism, this is the time to do that. And it's such a great celebration. I'll never forget Mary Eckert up here on the worship team. We had a night of worship, and she got so excited, she just ran down there in her clothes and jumped in the baptistry. It was like, so you never know what's going to happen on a, on a Wednesday worship night. You may just go jump in yourself, and we'll have a great time. But it was such a wonderful time. But these are just celebrations and times to just enjoy the Lord, enjoy the presence of God. So we welcome you to come and be a part of that. And uh, love to have you out. And then also, we're going to, in just a moment, I'm looking at my little notes here. Oh, where we play groups. So we're doing starting these in, in uh, June. We've got several ready to go. And if you'll stop by the Connect Center in our area of the Connect groups, we've got those. And if you want to look and see if there's one that interests you, and these are built around, these are called affinity groups. So they're built around things we like to do and enjoy. So uh, connect with one of those. It's only four weeks. And then we'll, we may re-up in July. We'll see how the summer goes. But it's something we're trying. And so jump in on our lab class experiment and enjoy getting to know people and hang out. People maybe you don't know yet, and it's around something you might enjoy doing. So stop and check that out. 
So now we're going to turn our attention to communion. So when you came in today, if you'll notice, we always leave the elements out there, and so we're just trying to get everybody to get used to picking those up on the way in. But perhaps you forgot to pick yours up. If so, I see Doc Hardison back there. He's ready to go. If you'll just lift your hand up real high, we'll get those elements to you. Or if you're really close to one of these, then you can do that as well. Another thing we're going to do today, which we're excited about, is we're going to celebrate our seniors. Uh, we have graduating seniors this year, and we're going to bring uh, Brian up. Doc, if you'll go ahead and continue to get those elements out. Would you all welcome Brian up here on the pl platform? So we appreciate Pastor Brian. He's leading our student ministry now, and we're so thrilled. Leslie, his wife's helping out in children's ministry, and they've just been such a blessing to have back in. So I'm going to turn it over to you, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, we are so excited to have our graduating seniors here with us today. Uh, we're excited to honor and to um, be a part of this rite of passage as they're getting ready to start a new stage of their lives. And I would like to invite those seniors that are here today to come forward. Um, we have their names on the screen here. Uh, first, we have Lauren Benfield, who, if I understand correctly, was not able to be here with us today. Um, next, we have Brian Arnell, who is with us. If you would come on up, Brian, let's give him an applause. <laughs> Brian will be graduating this Friday night from FHS. Um, we also have Abigail Sechrist, and Abigail is here this morning. Abigail, please come forward. And also, Tatum Chenault uh, will be graduating Friday, but uh, was not able to be with us this morning, but we still honor those who are not with us. Uh, graduating from college or from the university, two of my former students, uh, we have first Rebecca Sechrist. Um, Rebecca, if you will come forward. Is Rebecca here this morning? Did, did Rebecca make it? Okay, Rebecca did not make it this morning. Let's see. Um, and Megan Daly also. I, Megan, are you by chance here? I don't think... Uh, Megan was able to make it back. Um, but yes, we're, we're excited that you guys not only are going to be representing the schools that you graduate from, but you'll be representing Bridge Church wherever you go, wherever the Lord leads you, and you're representing Him, His name, and the kingdom. Um, as the people of Israel were graduating from their desert wanderings, the people of Israel were ready for some change. They had been eating the same food over and over, day after day, that what's it, manna from heaven. They had been wandering in the same shoes that somehow miraculously did not wear out. God was taking care of them. But they were ready to move into his promise. God sent 12 spies into that new land. They were ready to go forward. They were going to see what that new land was like. The 12 came back, but with different perspectives. 10, all they could see were these well-developed cities. Now, we, the people of Israel, were coming from wandering in the desert. We were not so uh, sophisticated. And all they could see was their sophistication. We're going to move into the land of sophisticated people. They're, they've got big cities with walls. They're, they're giants. Some of them are giants. That's all they could see. But what did the other two see when they were ready to graduate? They were ready to move into the land. They saw the giant size of God's promise. They saw the giant size of God's faithfulness to his people, how he had been faithful time and time again. And they said, oh, they also saw the giant size of the fruit, right? The fruit that came back and it was giant. And they believed that God would deliver on his promise, that he would go ahead of them fighting their battles and opening the way for them. That's our call today as we get ready to, we're losing some of the sports that have been up under us, the support of school, the support of our daily rhythm and schedule of high school and home. Some of those things are going to be changing, but what does not change is the faithfulness of God to his promise for your life. So listen day by day, read the word, follow him and obey, and you will represent him well. Guys, I have a book for you here today. Let's see. First, I have one for... For Abigail, I'm going to read what's in, in, in the book here. It says, He who began a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. The work he began isn't over, and he will bring it to completion in you. A book for you. Let's see. Let me make sure I get this the right person. This is Abigail. Yes, Abigail. They look the same on the outside, guys. This is Rebecca and Brian. There you go. And I'll, I'll 
I'll give you Rebecca's copy as well. Okay. All right. Let me pray over you guys, and then we'll, we'll go. God, we come to you this morning, and we present these graduating seniors to you. We give thanks for their lives, and we honor them. Lord, we trust that you are going to be faithful to the promises you have made to us and to them as they begin a transition in their lives, as they begin a new phase in their lives. Lord, help them to seek you day in and day out, and as they see you leading forward, to step on your every command. Lord, um, we just give them this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give them applause one more time, guys. Thank you. And something else that's a real blessing is that Brian is going to be preaching and, and sharing the message tonight at the baccalaureate service uh, for Fredericksburg High School. So it's a real blessing having Pastor Brian step up to the plate. So we're so thankful. And so in terms of communion, Jesus, when he pulled together his disciples, and they were together, and, and it, it's interesting to me that actually John chapter 13, 14, and 15 all happened the night of the Last Supper. All that going on in those few hours that they had together, those last few hours as they spent together, the introduction of the Holy Spirit, the, the, the Spirit of truth who leads us and guides us into all truth, the one called along to help, to help, all that was introduced as Jesus unpacked that for his disciples as they sat there for the Last Supper. And he did something curious. He said, I want you to remember me when you come together like this. So here we are, whether we're at home right now together as a family watching or an individual, but we're here together as the body of Christ. And when we come together like this, we need to pause and remember. And so that's what we're doing. So would you bow your heads? Father, in the name of Jesus, we remember and we are thankful. When you're with your disciples, you picked up a piece of bread and you held it and you said, you gave thanks for it and then you broke it and said this is my body given for you after the meal the, the Bible says you picked up a goblet of wine and you held it before him and said this is my blood of the new covenant and as much as you drink it you drink it with me the, beautiful, the beauty of the body and the blood being given for us on our behalf for the absolute removal the remission of sin and father we are thankful that you gave your son, and we're thankful that your son was a willing participant and did this for us. And we pause, and we remember, and we give thanks. We honor you. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. You can take the elements.
Thank you, Russ and Wendy, so much. You always take us on a journey every week with these amazing scripture songs. So thankful. Lori's headed over to the door. We're going to dismiss our children to their Bridge Kids classes. Would you join me in prayer? Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for the next generation. We ask God for an ongoing transformation in their classes as Lori and Leslie and their teams continue to minister life to our children. We're thankful. And we want to be the launching pad for them. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Can we clap for our children as they head to their classes? <laughs> amen. As they do that, we want to talk for a moment about generosity and the giving of our tithes and our offerings. We want to say thank you for all of you who continue to give faithfully uh, through thick and thin, highs and lows, world situations, pandemics all the political winds that are blowing and yet you continue to be faithful and generous because you're giving from the heart and you're giving to the Lord and I thank you for that our team thanks you for that in our church but also you'll notice on the screen the ministries we are blessed to support and partner with thank you for that as well and so you'll notice they're running across the screen you might pick one to pray for today we're going to pray in just a moment if you came prepared to give you'll notice on the doors over there there's two boxes and there's one also over there by that door and so if you came prepared to give during this next song as we worship and celebrate Christ and celebrate uh, his presence then you can give during that time for those of you who gave online or mailed in thank you we appreciate it. So we're going to take a moment. I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet as we pray for our offering today. Lord, thank you for the privilege of giving today. We are seed sowers, farmers who sow seed, and we don't understand how it all grows, but you do. And so we lean into and we trust you because you truly are our faithful God. We love you and we offer up our offerings and we offer up our worship, the sacrifice of praise. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. I am persuaded on every side, can't see the light of day, but I am persuaded beyond all hope. say you will not be made. I 
are grateful for your faithfulness we sing into it we lean into it we live into it and now lord as we turn our attention to the written word the spoken word we ask you god to prepare our hearts holy spirit cultivate our hearts to receive the good seed of the word of god knowing it'll bring forth a great harvest a harvest of change a harvest of transformation. We lift up Pastor Rick as he speaks today. Encourage him, anoint him, fill him with all that you are. And Father, we position ourselves to listen, to learn, to grow. We honor you. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Before you're seated, turn and greet one another.
All right, I want to call you to make your way back to your seat, your spot. It's always like herding cats, getting everybody back in their spot. I love the fellowship, and we call it the buzz factor around here. I love the laughter, the noise, the joy as you fellowship. I want to introduce to you a dear friend, Pastor Rick McClure. Um, has been a difference maker in my life. I've known Pastor Rick and Annette, and I've known Pastor Rick and Cindy for over 20 years. We served together in the same city a number of years ago in Brown, Brownwood, Texas, and we got to know each other and begin to build a relationship and serve together and prayed together for that community, prayed for the kingdom to come in our time there, and that's how we built our relationship. And through the years, we've stayed connected, and uh, through the thick and the thin, Pastor Rick has seen the good, the bad, and the ugly in our lives. We've seen a little bit of that in, in his too, and that's what makes friendships solid and stable through the good and the bad. We may be bent, but we're never broken as friends, and so I'm so thankful for Pastor Rick. He's also an Arkansas state representative serving his state and making a difference and bringing the kingdom in the capital. And so I'm so thankful for men like and women like Pastor Rick and others who step up to the plate and in spite of whatever their profession happens to be, they also serve in our government and legislators. So we want to always continue to pray for and lift up our, our leaders and those who serve our, our states and our nation. And so I want to welcome Pastor Rick, if you would, brother come and y'all receive him give him a round of applause as he comes up good morning good morning good morning okay these two sections are awake i don't think i heard a thing out of this section over here is this the section that's asleep are y'all okay this morning they're still quiet oh man maybe we need us to move over here and help those folks what about this section are y'all okay this morning Okay, good, good. These are the two sections that are alive. I can, you can feel it when you're up here. You can hear that. Uh, Pastor Jimmy, he gets real quiet. And he says, you know, we've, we've known Rick for 20 years, but what he's not wanting you to do is add up how old he is. <laughs> I knew Pastor Jimmy in a previous century, <laughs> decades ago. <laughs> Makes him sound old. Notice I didn't say anything about knowing Annette that long because she would shoot me. But one thing she did do, she said, don't worry about the time we never get out before 2.15 on Sunday. And is that right? Is that, did I hear that correctly? <laughs> no, we, we will be brief. It is good to be here. Uh, I am a native Texan. And I know a lot of uh, our family and friends are in Arkansas are watching. And, and, uh, but I was born in Plainview, Texas. Does anybody know where Plainview, Texas is? A few hands. Well, Plainview is not too far from Earth. <laughs> Seriously, it's not too far from Earth. It, 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 it's about 30 miles east of Earth on Highway 70. Uh, I was just glad I wasn't in a mule shoe when I was born. But, you know, I lived in a little field that was also kind of like a brown field. And then I grew, grew up and went to school in a hail center. And a lot of people said, you've already been to hell, the center of hell. No, hail, H-A-L-E. So, yes, most of my life has been in Texas, but God moved us. And I tell you what, I love Arkansas. It has been good. This is probably not a good time to tell you that in my backyard I have 100-foot trees and green grass, and, and right down the road is a huge river that's running clear water. And it's, we've only had 24 inches of rain so far this year. Now, all that being said, I remember what it's like. Seriously, on the note, I remember the droughts. I remember the fires. I remember those things. And so we need to be praying for the area here because those fires, they're, they're bad. They, they can get bad in a hurry, and I know what that drought is like. Well, we're going to get into God's Word. If you'll go with me to the New Testament, to the book of Romans, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and Romans, you could go to chapter 12. Uh, I love teaching on motivational gifts. I'm not going to be teaching on motivational gifts this morning, but in verses 6 through 8, you find serving, teaching, encouragement, giving, leadership, kindness, and prophecy. And pastors love to teach on those things, so we all find out what we're gifted in, what, what we're good in, what we're designed for. 
But then there's a practical application. There's a practical application of what do we do with these things that God has given us. God has made us uniquely. We have special abilities, each one of us different. So how do we apply those? Well, I love what the next few verses that we read say because it helps us apply what we know that we have on the inside of us. So we're going to begin reading in verse number 9. Romans chapter 12, verse number 9. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and del take delight in honoring one another. Never be lazy, but work hard to serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope, be patient in trouble, and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. And some of you are thinking right now, why couldn't he have just skipped over that verse? Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people and don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. So our walk with the Lord is to be one of helping one another. We need one another. We need help. One of the things that COVID taught us is that we really need one another. The more that we were apart, the more we realized how much we needed one another. These verses are also clear that when we're helping one another that we should stand for what is right but still love people. And the challenge becomes is how do you love thing, people when there's things that are going on contrary to God's word and do it in a way that you don't belittle the person. It is a challenge. And we have to learn how we communicate and how we don't communicate. I, I've lived most of my life being told that my tone of voice sometimes is a little strong. Mainly my wife tells me that. <laughs> my kids tell me that. What they didn't realize is they just needed that tone to do what I told them to do. <laughs> See, now I can feel y'all already. You're just like, ooh, no wonder they told you that. But we all have different communication styles. There's an old story about a little girl that was learning how to use her knife and fork, and, and she's just at the dinner table and eating supper, and she's just having a good time, and she's doing her little thing. And you know how kids are? They, they have a great imagination. So she's taking a little knife and a fork and a spoon, and they've got a conversation going on. I love it when the imagination of kids. And during this time, the mother begins to listen in. And the little girl just looked at, it, at her and she said, if I had to choose, I would be a spoon. The mother said, a spoon? Well, why would you want to be a spoon? What's wrong with being a knife or a fork? Well, said the little girl, forks are a little grabby. They stab things. They take things. They're trying to get things. And like that kid at the school when he reaches over and grabs my dessert with his fork. Okay, the mother said, I, I, can, I can see that. Well, what about a knife? No, knives are scary because they cut things. That's what we teach kids, right? Be careful with a knife, they'll cut things. And you really can't eat very well with a knife, but they just slice stuff up. And she held up the spoon and she said, but spoons, they're nice, they're smooth, they're round. That's 
pass stuff around with it. They're friendly. I just want to be a spoon. Well, little did she know that she was describing behavioral styles of most people. Little did she know that she was describing communication styles of most of us because most of us are very much like a knife, fork, or a spoon. Some are eager to help, some are not. Some just want to give instructions. Some are easy to work with or live with, some are not. So we're going to take a look at some knives, forks, and spoons. I like to start out with a fork because I realized that I was kind of a fork in my life. Now, forks are very, very useful. I mean, there's lots of things that you can do with it. It's not very good with soup, but uh, you, you, can, you can cut things with it a little bit. You can pull things apart, pick it apart. They're very good at picking apart. Some people are very good at picking apart other people. And if they... If you get it stuck into something, you've got it controlled. You can control it. You pick it up. You can look at it. You've got it under control. A piece of meat. Salad. You got it in the lettuce. You got it, you got it under control. You know, there's some of us, like myself, that were just a little picky. I mean, I, I wasn't trying to be picky. I just was trying to help people do what they needed to do according to my viewpoint. They just needed some help. Just pick, 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 pick. And so what happens is sometimes as a fork, if you don't let God come into your life and balance you out and shape you and mold you and make you into the strengths of your gifts then you can get a little bit controlling. Matter of fact, you can get to a place where you can hurt some folks. Well, see, in my life, I didn't mind letting other people do things as long as they were, they were doing it my way. And if they didn't want to do it my way, I'd just get in there and say, excuse me, let me get a hold of this and I'll take control of it. And then it was done right. With people crying and weeping all the way around. Because I went from the usefulness to something being very hurtful with my personality and my communication style. Do you know people like that? Don't, don't, don't look in around the room. Don't, don't do that. Do you know people like that? You may live with someone like that. And it's sometimes when we allow God to say, God, I don't want to be like that. I want, I want to be loving and caring and sensitive. And we're trying to be the useful part. And then all of a sudden, we move over and we spiritualize it. Oh, I had a moment of flesh and getting in the flesh. <laughs> Ever heard the saying, their claws came out, their fangs came out? Those are fork people. Now, I can take this. I, took, I grabbed this off the grill yesterday when I was leaving for the airport. And uh, uh, this thing right here, I mean, you can grab a whole brisket and take that thing, man, pull that up. Man style, we got control. Do you know people like that? Hmm. Now, you take someone that has a little bit of impulse control, and if they're just a regular little fork, they're a little bit annoying but if they haven't let Jesus really work for them in their life and they have impulse control, when they come out and this hits you, this injures folks. Maybe not physically, but the words break their heart, crushes their desire to help or to serve. Now, knives. Knives are a little bit different. My dad carried an old-timer pocket knife all his whole life. Very useful tool. Very useful tool. And it was great whether he was just picking on something or whether he needed to open something. It was just a great tool. Just a great, wonderful tool. And uh, we had knives. This is a butter knife. 
And it's a great tool. You can spread butter, spread icing. If it's chocolate, then you can lick the icing off and you can actually eat icing with a uh, knife. But knives, by design, are always trying to shape people or shape things into something else. And people who are like a knife are always trying to shape people into what they think they should be. Just twiddling on them. Just twiddling on them. Now, I'm going to say something I didn't say in the first service, so I'm going to trust that it's the Lord. How many marriages do you know that people got married and they loved one another, but they knew there were issues and they thought that they would change if I can just work on them a little bit? And it doesn't work. And if you don't have God working in your heart and making you where you're trying to have peace and trying to have the fruits of the Spirit, then what happens is you get where you're divisive and you'll hurt people with that sharp tongue of yours and controlling everything. These people divide people. I know a brother that I consider him a knife. And he's very blunt. He's much better now, but he went through a time. He divided people. And when I shared with him, I said, Brother, you just need to tone that down a little bit. He said, Well, God's called me to separate the sheep from the goats. No, he didn't. I think that's Jesus' job. Or how about this? Well, if it ain't right, it ain't right. Y'all must know some nice people. Y'all are very quiet. <laughs> Either that or you're concerned what I'm about to do with this knife. I'm not sure. <laughs> These people divide people. I'll tell you a little story. I had a situation where some people were leading a group some time ago and we had perimeters and guidelines and um, they were doing a fantastic job, a wonderful job, just a wonderful job. And um, people were going to the group that I just never thought would go. And I respected them. They were more uh, of age than me and had tremendous, many, many years experience. And little by little, we begin to notice and little by little the guidelines that we set out were asked to be extended or do this or do this and I said okay and I went along with it and the more that we went along the more we saw this and people started getting hurt why do I say that? You have to know whether you're a knife, a fork, or a spoon. And what happened was, what started out with great intentions, without the balance of God on the inside of them, and submitting under a covering, turned into something that began to be divisive and began to hurt. So let's get to the spoon. Spoons. Wonderful, wonderful. One of my things that I love about Texas is a little thing called bluebell ice cream. Love bluebell ice cream. What's my favorite flavor? flavor? Yes. <laughs> yes. My dad was a bluebell ice cream addict. A number of years ago when he had to go to the assisted living facility, he was in charge of cleaning out the house. And then so I, my job was the freezer, and I, I took a picture because I knew nobody would believe. I pulled out 10 half gallons bluebell ice cream and built a big pyramid the man decided his journey to heaven was going to be a sweet one <laughs> spoons love spoons you can do a little bit of cutting with a spoon not anything hurtful but you can you can pass things around on a spoon 
think God, like the little girl said, wants to be a spoon. Because Jesus came not to serve, not to be served, but to serve. Well, there's a lot of people who are spoons. They're called to be a spoon. They have a big heart. They've got great intentions, and they, they want to do a lot of things. They want to help. But maybe there's some, some issues in their life. Maybe it's uh, uh, time management. Maybe it's overcommitment. M maybe it's getting bored. But sometimes spoons get full of holes. These are the people that have a big heart and are trying to help, but you can't really rely on them because you don't know if they're going to be there. You don't know if they're going to be able to help. And they're trying, but they dip up something and it just things just seem to fall through. But there is a design that I do believe that is God. Now that my friend, is what I feel God would want us to use in serving. Smooth. Be passed around. We can share it. When I picked this up this morning, I was reminded of the some of the old scenes where they had the old water well and they would pull up the bucket out of the water well and they had a ladle type of thing and they'd all take a drink and pass it around. I think this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to be able to really help people that are in need. He wants us to serve our communities, to serve our families, to serve our church. Just be good people, helping people, and loving people. But we've got to allow God to develop our character to be able to do that. We can have the heart but we don't have the discipline. Once we get the discipline, we can begin to serve. He said, well, what do I need to do to become that? Because I don't want to be that ugly fork or that knife. That's scary. Well, good question. Let me read you a scripture at the beginning of chapter 12. Actually, I'm going to read verse number 2 from the New Living Translation. Listen to what it has to say. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Now, we could stop right there and do a five-week series. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Listen, if you live in a world of drama, you're either causing the drama or permitting the drama. We don't need to live in a world of drama, but there's drama everywhere around us. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a person by changing the way you think. For me, when something began to bother me, I would hear a little voice say, let it go. Let it go. I don't care if they're singing off key, Rick. Let them go. It's a sweet, sweet sound to me. Let it go. Let it go. I don't care if they gave you unsweetened tea and Texas is the home of sweet tea. Let it go. Don't get up and go put sugar in the tea in front of the person who made the tea. Let it go. I'm being silly, but this must be hitting home. Just let it go. Let God transfer you to a new person by changing the way you think. Now listen to this promise. Then, then, when, when does then happen? After whatever the condition was previous to it. Then you will learn to know God's perfect will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. God, help me from being divisive and critical. I don't mean to be, but these people just need help. See, that's... That's the way I used to pray. I don't want to hurt people, Lord, but God, somebody's got to shape them up. 
Little did I know as, I, as God worked on me and mellowed me out over the years and helped me just to accept people and enjoy people and to let it go and things don't bother me much anymore, that he would call me into another phase of ministry and send me to the state capitol where there are lots of these. <laughs> I don't know if y'all watch the news. There are a lot of big forks and big knives out there picking, stabbing people, separating people, carving people up, belittling people, trying to shape people into what they want them to be. And if you stand up for God, these things come in mega sizes with the fangs of a rattlesnake. And you have to remember that wherever God has placed you, I have to move from here to here. Regardless of how many of these are around me. Because what happened, I will tell you, with my first session in the legislature, I, I came home one evening, my wife was asking me, well, what's it like? And, and, and I was spent a number of years in the corporate world. And I said, do you know, or do you remember when I complained about being in the business world and the corporate world about the backstabbing, lying, manipulating, can't trust nobody, people? Yeah, I said, it's worse. <laughs> and she has blue eyes, and she goes, yeah, but God called you to this. And so I already had packed my dagger to take back with me. I was ready to pick some people apart and divide it up and tell them what God's Word said. And I heard several times, keep your mouth shut and let your actions speak. Sometimes just serving speaks much louder than being picky or dividing. Well, so it is in churches. We all have to work with one another. Churches are run by volunteers. Nearly every church I know is run by volunteers. Nothing happens without the volunteers. And you get a bunch of volunteers together. You ever had too many cooks in the kitchen? Ever had too many chiefs? Someone has to decide they're going to serve. Let other people lead. Sometimes I let people lead. And I'm thinking to myself, this is going to be a trade wreck. And sure enough, it is, but they grow through it. Have you let some people lead and they're a little bit timid and they're working on this and they didn't, wasn't able to follow through and you know inside of their heart they're really this and you've got to give them a chance to grow through the phases? My question for you this morning is this. Will you allow God to shape and change the way that you think and perceive? Instead of just saying, well, that's the way I am. I call it like I see it. That was me. Call it like you see it, but keep your mouth shut. God just spoke to somebody. I don't know who it was. Matter of fact, there's a, there's a verse in Proverbs. I think it's in uh, the Living Bible. And it says, keep your mouth shut and you'll stay out of trouble. I had a hard time learning that one. Proverbs eleven twenty five does say this. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others, you don't refresh others by picking them apart or cutting them apart. You refresh others by serving. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Remember the scripture, whatever you plant, that you will also reap. So if you're going to be picky and divisive, guess what's coming back? If you serve others in your time of trouble, people will be there for you. Galatians 3.23. Work willingly. I'm going to, leave, I'm going to put an extra thought in here. As a leader and as a pastor, I have learned over the years, work willingly is important because I could recruit people to volunteer for things that they were not designed to do. 
and they would get in there and something would happen and it, it just never worked out find where you want to serve find where it needs to God may be calling you to be on a school board somewhere or on a city council somewhere or on a volunteer thing or volunteering in this area this area or a prison area it, it, it doesn't have to be a formal time just get out and pick up trash and love people just love be nice we live in a world of a lot of weird people I saw several of them in a couple of airports yesterday. Work willing at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. I'm going to pray, and let me tell you what I'm going to do. I don't have a prayer written out. I like praying from my heart. And as I pray, if I say something that I started to say fits you, but that's a little picky. That's similar to you. Will you just take it that God's saying something to you this morning? Father, I come to you, and I thank you for what you've done in my heart. Thank you, Father, that you showed me that even my strengths can turn into weaknesses if I use them incorrectly. Help, thank you, Father, that you've helped me get them back into balance. Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit that has come that when I revert back to being too picky or too divisive that you show me how I need to handle things. Father, I thank you that you give me the boldness to stand up for what is right and to handle things in a way that is pleasing to you and never compromise. But at the same time, Father, I thank you that you've called me to serve. Father, for those that are trying to find their place in, the, in this community, in this church, and just serving you in the kingdom of God. Father, I thank you that you showed them. Father, I know that when I stepped out to serve, I would complain. And you heard my complaints, Lord, about that. I didn't like the way they did this or I didn't like the way they did that. And you told me to just let it go and serve you rather than serve people. So, Father, I thank you that you're speaking to people, that you're going to help them find that place of serving, of being that big spoon of serving your love, your mercy, and your compassion to a world that needs so much help right now. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Rich, would you, uh, Pastor Rick, would you encourage him with a hand, round of applause? <laughs> Tell them after the first service. I'll never forget those stories. I'll never forget those illustrations. And uh, man, may we all be spoons. Amen. Amen. We're going to go out with worship. I want to invite you to stand to your feet as we get ready to go. For those of you who signed up for the leader lunch, we'll be meeting right after this, right here in the family room. That's just your door on the right as you're heading out. And uh, if you didn't register but you thought, you know, I really wanted to come to that and I forgot to Listen, we'll make room for you, and we'd be glad to have any walk-ins today if you want to come and spend the next hour with us. Again, about uh, probably about 15 minutes we'll meet over there. And we got a meal ready to go, so we'll go and enjoy each other. So Pastor Russ is going to lead us in worship now. It's a song that may be familiar to you, but really it's just a song of blessing. We're going to sing this blessing over one another. So Pastor Russ.
make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. We glorify your name because you were for us. You were for us. And though the world may be against us, 
you are for us and we praise you for it in Jesus precious and mighty name the church said amen God bless you as you go we're here for prayer